Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, hello, sir. Can you hear us? Can you hear us now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. Hello, sir. You are audible. हेलो हेलो यानी दिन रात हेलो सर हेलो सर आर्यन ने मिक्सर से दिया हेलो मैडम केल्स था इधर आ ओके ओके थैंक यू सर
Good morning, Dr. Sapir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Whenever you're ready, please do let me know. I'll start my presentation. Okay, sir. Hello. Hello.
So good morning to one and all. It gives me a great pleasure to invite you all for this online webinar or workshop on design thinking, critical thinking, and innovation design organized by the Institution Innovation Council of Saran VIT. So, so it is great pleasure for us to have our resource person, Mr. Rahul Segal, Head of the Technology for System Integration, Design Tech System Private Limited of Bangalore. So I request uh, Dr. Supriya Madam to give the welcome address and to introduce the speaker. Hello, and I, I welcome everyone once again to this workshop. And I am very honored to introduce one of our a very reputed today's resource person, Mr. Rahul Sekal. He is a mechanical engineer with nearly 23 years of experience in digitalization, manufacturing, automation industrial IoT, mechatronics, digital manufacturing and the PLM industry. And right now he is working with Design Tech Systems Private Limited as a head of technology for system integration, battery modernization and scale development. And he has started his career as a maintenance engineer in Bharat Fort, Pune, and subsequently has been moved to an PLM industry and carried out various consulting projects in India and also the abroad, the USA, Germany, Japan, Philippines, and also UK. He has worked for companies like Siemens Industry Software, Tata Consultancy Services, and Autodesk Instrumentation. He has been instrumental in setting up a couple of raising plans for customers in India and also North America and ground trade expansion project and he has the interaction with the industry has been around plant modernization, adoption of industry for internet of things, digitalization, automation, productivity, improvement, DFM, DFU, maintainability and maintenance, safety and product innovation and all other aspects of manufacturing experience. And he has also, when he was with Siemens, he has been instrumental in establishing 80 plus skill centers across the country in collaboration with state and central government with the aim of bridging the gap between industry and academia. And also he was in promoting research and development and also incubation in different areas. So he was actively engaged with K-12 schools to promote STEM-based education. So he has got a source of other things to them, but these are all some of the important things or important achievements of our uh, Mr. Rahul Sehgal. So with this, I once again welcome Rahul sir for this workshop, sir. Sir, it is for the user now. So I thank uh, Dr. Sukriya, HOD of Telecom Department, for introducing this speaker. I welcome all the students and faculties of SADMIT for this uh, informative session. Sir, over to you, sir. Sir, you are being made as a host. Kindly share your screen, sir. You are being made as a host. Kindly share your screen, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Your screen is visible, sir. And uh, can you just change the slide, sir, just for testing purpose? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, there will be a security session. Uh, since you are sharing the screen, 
in the you, you will have the security session mm -hmm. uh, in, under that the security tab right click and uh, disable people from using annotations sir. this one right So under security, uh, it's already turned off. Annotate on chat content. So Dr. Supriya, should I start? The kindly proceed, sir. Okay. <clears throat> A very good morning to one and all. Uh, my name is Rahul Segal, and I would like to thank uh, Dr. Priya for giving an introduction on my background in terms of what I have done uh, from a perspective of a professional life in the last 23, 24 years that I've been working. Uh, the topic which has been given to me today is design thinking, critical thinking, and innovation, which is one of the most important aspects in the industry moving forward. So before I move forward, just to give you an introduction of the organization I represent today, it's called Design Tech Systems Private Limited. It's among the top three service providers for CAT CAM, CAE, PLM, Industry 4.0, uh, additive manufacturing, plus other radios in the country. And uh, you know we have nine, we are located in nine cities in India and overseas. We collaborate with multiple organizations in the country, organizations like PTC and Rockwell Automation, Altair, Stratasys, SLM, Bentley, MathWorks, IBM, and Synopsys, to name a few. So we basically represent them in terms of promoting the technology, uh, both to academia and industries, and also carrying out service-related activities in these areas. So what is design thinking? You know. And this is something which has been defined, critical thinking has been defined, innovation has been defined, most of it will come under the preview of research and development. So design thinking is a culture of solving problems, making decisions, forming strategies, learning and designing things with a human approach. And it often contrasted with data-driven approach that doesn't place as much value on human creativity. Now, if you look at a child, you know, who has evolved from his schooling days and gone into, let's say, engineering, at every point in time, you have always designed something. It's basically out of your curiosity. It's basically out of the way you think. And you have designed a few things. And that basically comes out in terms of sketches which you have made. And that is what your imagination is. Now, that imagination, when it comes in with a certain process, to solve a problem is where design thinking comes into place. Now, the most important aspect of design thinking is understanding the problem which you need to solve and the information around it. And how is it going to affect the people who are going to be using that product or who's going to be using that technology? So that's what design thinking is all about. <clears throat> to give you examples of design thinking, Let's start from a school level example where you know children are basically taught the physics of flight as how something flies by designing kites. We look at it from a business perspective, how a business is obsessed with product design over analyzing and tweaking marketing. We will see examples of this in videos when we move forward. And an approach to sustainability that design sometimes is useful that helps to solve an environmental issue. So there are designs today which are being done to also ensure that environment uh, issues are taken care of, uh, like you know, in terms of the exhaust systems of the cars, the exhaust systems of a ship. So all of them have seen a lot of innovation and a lot of critical thinking and design thinking come into place to ensure that those norms are met globally. Now, when we took an example of high school, I would just want to play a video. Now, in this video, what is critical is you know, what is the mechanism based on which a fish actually swims? What is the mechanism on which an elephant's trunk works? What is the mechanism in which a chameleon's tongue works? Now, these are all biological examples. You know, at some point or the other, we have always wondered how a fish swims. How does the elephant trunk work? How does the chameleon able to just snap and catch an insect and eat it? So there's a lot of science behind this biology also. 
And the organization, which I'm going to show the video to you, is an organization called Festo, F-E-S-T-O. And Festo have gone into design thinking, critical thinking and innovation and come out with such kits for high school students to explain to them the concepts on which these mechanisms work. A small video, which will, you know, which will break the ice to give you an introduction to how design thinking, critical thinking and innovation works. Please do let me know if you can hear the audio. Are you able to hear the audio? Hello. Yes, sir, we can hear, sir. We can hear the audio. The audio is not uh, audio is not uh, audio is not they are coming. They're unable to hear the audio. Just a moment, sir. Are you able to hear now, sir? Uh, now, please, sir. I'll play it again. Let me know if you're able to hear the audio. Uh, the video's audio is not uh, You can only hear your voice, but not the audio of the playing, playing video. Are you able to get it now, sir? Uh, no, sir. Play the video, sir. What I've done is I've just removed my earplugs. Bionics, the study audio, of efficient operators. Video audio is not there. OK, I'll talk over the video so that people will understand. Yeah, we can hear your voice. Thank you. Yeah. So this is basically a bionic learning system. This is from Festo. This is basically for education. Bionics. The study of efficient operating principles from nature and applying them to the this world of technology is a source of fascination system. for people around the world, especially children. Natural creatures. You know, it could be an ant, for this reason, Festo has now and initiated Bionics for Education, bionics for education. an interactive and training concept that has brought way. the world of bionics to the classroom. The the kids to teach children the bionics for education is deswegen so, so top, weil die Schüler letztendlich Dinge aus der Natur umbauen können, in die Technik mit ummünzen können und dort ihre Erfolge feiern, indem sie kreativ damit arbeiten. Das Schöne ist, dass wir mit den Schülern im Unterricht es so starten können, dass die Schüler erstmal zum Lebensbezug in der Natur den Einstieg finden. Bionics for Education, a construction kit and a digital learning platform in one that allows bionic prototypes to be built in a creative so way. The, the kit includes a number of different upon. functional and connector elements, they a microcontroller and servo motors. motors. And now, the, now the audio is uh, hearable. The okay, integral okay. training concept is thus an exciting alternative and can be used in subjects such as biology and technology and in various projects.
The corresponding digital learning platform offers many additional features with biological background information and instructions completing the concept. Up until now, three projects could be creatively and individually implemented with the construction kit. A fish, an elephant's trunk, and a gripper based on the archetype of the chameleon's tongue. Wenn man den Schülern am Schluss in die Gesichter guckt, da ist Freude zu erkennen, weil sie sehen, es geht auf jeden Fall. Es bewegt sich was, es schwimmt sogar was, es lässt sich was greifen, wenn dann auch noch was funktioniert. Und das Ganze einfach zusammenzubauen ist, dann ist die Stimmung großartig. Wir haben Tiere, die es in Wirklichkeit gibt, eben in Technik umgesetzt. Und das ist auch was sehr Interessantes. Und mir hat auch gefallen, dass es auch mal was anderes war und nicht die ganze Zeit schreiben. Auszuprobieren, wie man einen Fisch baut, hat Spaß gemacht. Bionic? So, this gives you an idea. The problem statement over here was to, you know, create something or design something which could teach children the concept in which a fish can actually swim the concept in which an elephant's trunk works and the concept in which a chameleon's tongue works. Now, for this, the whole aspect was to design something which could be used to solve the problem and also to bring in a lot of technology over here. So when you saw when the kits were being used by the kids and when they put the fish which they made into the tank, they could actually control it from a phone. That's thanks to the microcontrollers which, were, which allowed that kind of IO connectivity to take place. Now, Today's world is completely mechatronics based. When we say mechatronics, it's completely driven by sensors. It's a mixture of mechanical, electrical, electronics, and computer science. And most of the devices, most of the plants, most of the equipment, anything which you see are all smart connected devices today. Giving you a very simple example, let's take Ray-Ban. Ray-Ban has come out with a set of glasses, which has a mic on it, and it's got a earplug. You can just wear the glasses and you can connect it to your smartphone and you can just start talking to people and receive calls on that. So the basic idea is somebody is wanting to wear glasses throughout the day. At the same time, they want to have the ease of taking the call when they're wearing the glasses. So that's how the whole problem solving technique with technology and connectivity came in. These are smart connected devices. So the whole idea is when you start thinking about solving any problem in today's world, you will have to make it smart in nature. Otherwise, you would be behind the trends in the industry. Talking about emerging technologies, there are a huge number of emerging technologies which are there, right from additive manufacturing, which we also call as 3D printing, advanced analytics, which is an area of CAE. Materials is playing a large role today. There is a lot of research happening on materials today. Advanced robotics, Robotics in India is picking up. We are actually lagging compared to the global scenario, but you know, robotics is definitely picking up. To give you an example, the Ola electric plant, which has come up in uh, Tamil Nadu, is basically going to be operating with 500 robots over there for the manufacturing of the electric vehicle, which is a scooter over there. Artificial intelligence is playing a large role, but you know, the myth that artificial intelligence is going to take away jobs is wrong. Artificial intelligence is basically to ease the process and to ensure that no disasters happen. You know, whenever a machine is going down or if a plant has got a problem, and if you wait for the failure to happen and without any corrective action taken, you know, that's a lot of loss to the organization. So, you know, that's where artificial intelligence is coming into picture, which is again designed based on certain parameters. Biotechnology and biomanufacturing is another emerging technology, blockchain, cybersecurity, and forensics. Digital design, simulation, energy, high performance computing or cloud computing, AR, VR, and MR, which is augmented reality, virtual reality, and mixed reality, along with wearable and gesture recognition devices. And last but not the least is IoT, which is what talks about networks and sensors. So these are the emerging technologies. The ones which have already been adopted by the various different industry verticals is for connectivity and computing power, which is using internet of things. A lot of organizations today are talking about digitalization, is talking about IoT. Few of them who have already adopted are moving towards artificial intelligence. 
Then comes the aspects of human machine interface, which is wearable devices. A lot of us also have smart watches, which we wear. It could be any smart watch, which you're wearing. That's a wearable device and the screen with which you interface is called the human machine interface. And as we move from industry 3.0 to industry 4.0, we're getting into the next generation of automation. We're talking about advanced robotics. We're talking about humanoids coming into picture. We're talking about a different set of 3D printing machinery coming into the, into the world and addressing a lot of issues which you know, industries are facing. Now, having spoken about what are the industry trends, what are the emerging technologies, let us also look as a student, what are the skills that you would need, you know, when you basically are going to pass out and uh, get into the industry. So, you know, at that point of time, the kind of skills you would be requiring is a lot of digital skills, a lot of technology and computer skills, programming skills, not only for robots, but also for automation, critical thinking and working with tools and techniques. Now, when I talk about this and I talk about design thinking, now I would not take you into the process of how a part is designed or how a product is designed, but I will show you how you know, different areas of design thinking are addressed with multiple different tools and technologies, which you've seen over here as working with tools and techniques. So we will look at that aspect from a design thinking, critical thinking, and from an innovation perspective. The first and most important aspect of design thinking, you know, this is a process. Design thinking is a complete process. The first and most important step is what is the problem that you're going to solve? How much information do you have about the problem? How much clarity do you have about the problem? Have you written down the problem statement? So one is definitely definition of the problem which needs to be addressed. We will take examples, you know, of definitions as we go down into videos. Now, once you have take, understood the problem, the next aspect is whatever I make, you know, how do I learn from it? How does uh, you know, learn from it as to how the user is going to use it? And does it uh, you know, address the need for which this whole product is being designed for or the whole process is being designed for? Now, you have identified the problem. You've also seen the kind of need it's going to address. Then you want to basically visualize the idea. So you're converting your ideas into actual designs. And from those designs, you know, you have moved from a, con you have now problem statement. You have looked at the need, which is there. You have actually done the visualization. So basically you're moved from ideation to a design concept. And from the design concept, you want to now create a prototype. Prototype earlier were created in two ways. Uh, you know, prototypes, if it is IT related is program, it's totally on an architectural way in which the prototype is created. When we come to it from an industry perspective of a manufacturing industry perspective, the physical prototypes which are actually created and earlier it was CNC machines which were used predominantly, but today additive manufacturing and reverse engineering also find a huge scope in prototyping. Actually, they've taken over a lot of prototyping. After a functional prototype is made, it needs to be tested and based on the testing results, the whole design needs to be redefined. It's an iterative process which continues to happen. So these are the five steps which are basically followed in a design thinking process. Just to reiterate to you, problem statement, the need it's going to take care of, actual visualization of what you're designing, a proto physical prototype, functional prototype, testing, and if that needs to be a redefining of or a tweaking of the design, then the whole process is followed again. So this is what design thinking process is all about. Now, let me take it from a manufacturing industry perspective. Now, in a manufacturing industry perspective, uh, if you see under the second pillar, which is life cycle, uh, you will see a requirement management tab, which has been ticked off the first one. Now, what is requirement management? Requirement management is where you go and understand what is it that a particular person or a particular organization is looking at? What is it that you need to design and then go and manufacture? So that comes under the complete requirement management. So you're doing a complete requirement management over here. Now, when you understand the problem statement and you know which area you're going to address and before you go into the area of designing it, you also come into a project management part of it. So you know, you're managing a complete project. So project management also plays a role over here. Now, once you have done this, you start creating designs. Now, in the manufacturing industry, the designs are created using three-dimensional tools, which we also call as CAD. So, you know, CAD designs are created. 
Now, how are CAD designs created? They come on with sketches, they come up with freeform designs, they get into detailed design. And most importantly today, any design which is being done for any machinery has to be done keeping smart connected devices in mind. Now, when you're doing that, you're basically talking about an IoT connected product. An IoT connected product is also called as a digital twin. So that's something. So you also have to learn how to design with sensors. Now, today you pick up any, even if you go to a shop to pick up artifacts, a lot of artifacts have chips inbuilt into them because they can be programmed for certain operations through your phone. So that's where smart connected devices or smart connected products are coming into picture. And that's where the complete definition or the whole modeling of a product is done using 3D. Now, what happens now, I would take you out of design thinking a little bit into what happens on the manufacturing side over here now, is once you design a product, you know, you come up with a bill of material, which is what are the different components required for this, which we call in the engineering parlance as engineering bill of material. When this moves to manufacturing, it's called the manufacturing bill of material. And then there is a whole production planning and production execution, which happens after that. So 3D and life cycle basically cover the design to the complete data management, to complete requirement management, project management, and also the manufacturing process management, which takes place. Now, when we have created or we have designed a smart object or a smart connected device or a smart connected machinery, what is important is where are the sensors going to be located? What are the different sensors? Now, that's the aspect of you know, your design thinking and critical thinking, because you're going to also look at what kind of data acquisition you're going to do from that because today everything is being controlled remotely to a large extent in the manufacturing industry. But that's where the orchestration comes into picture. The orchestration is take the sensor information, you know, I would break IoT, think, you know, think works, which I'm talking about here is an IoT platform. The IoT platform is broken into four aspects. Now I have my smart connected device or a product which has got sensors because it has been designed with sensors technology. Now, these sensors pass on the information to the IoT platform. So you, the first step is connectivity. So you're connecting the IoT platform via sensors to get information. Step number two is when you start getting information from the smart connected device, you start doing data analytics. Based on the data analytics you do, you get into application development. And once the application development is done, you have to host it. So it's either hosted on the cloud or it's hosted on premise. So now you have designed a product, you've looked at the manufacturing aspect and you looked at the smartness of the project by connecting it to an IoT platform. Now, all this creates multiple experiences. There is a design experience which is created, there's a manufacturing experience which is created, and there's an operational experience which is created with an IoT platform. Now, all these can actually be taken in and authored using an augmented reality tool. Now, an augmented reality tool can help you during your design which is your uh, design thinking, your critical design, or you know, even during innovation, the whole augmented reality experience can help you on that. So it basically helps you on the R&D side, on the design aspects, on the manufacturing aspects, maintenance aspects. Also, it helps you in sales and marketing. Now, when you are looking at augmented reality, augmented reality is also a design, and it's being designed for a particular function of an organization. And that's where it plays multiple roles. We will look at a few videos, uh, another couple of slides down, which will talk about how augmented reality is being used from a design perspective in multiple different areas. Now, when we come to the whole product development process, which is based on IoT, and this is where you have to wear two hats. One is from your design thinking perspective, another is from your critical design perspective. Innovation automatically gets covered if you're doing something new, which has not been done, or if you're trying to improvise on something which has already been done. So we break this into four parts again, design and engineering, manufacturing, service and maintenance, IT, IT, OT, and security. Information technology, operational technology, that is what IT and OT stands for. And security, because most of the information today is stored on a cloud. So security plays a very key role. So going back to the five steps of design thinking, one is understanding the problem. So once you have understood the problem and the need which it needs to address, you have to come up with a conceptual design. Now, how are conceptual designs made? Typically, people will take a piece of paper or pencil and start sketching out their ideas of, you know, this is what I want to design in order to 
address a particular requirement or a need which is there. There, apart from sketching, there are other ways in which you can do it, is you can do a lot of freeform design, which is surface designs, a lot of engineering calculations. You would learn about a lot of mathematical tools like MATLAB coming in from MathWorks and other organizations. Simulink is one of them. So that's where your engineering calculations come into picture. And if somebody has already made a particular device, and if you want to do reverse engineering and innovate further on top of that, you can also use the reverse engineering technology and that's where your concept designs get prepared. Now from a conceptual design, you actually move into a detailed design where you would do the complete 3D modeling, rendering, assembly. Uh, you would do all your reviews, you would do your designs with sensors, all of that will come into the detailed engineering aspect. Now, whenever you are designing a product, you know, it could be for the automotive industry, aerospace industry, it could be for the arts and crafts, it could be for artifacts, it could be for home security. You also have to ensure that you carry out the simulation and see whether there is going to be any failure mode which is there. So that is where you do multiple, uh, you know, you would do system analysis, structural analysis, fatigue analysis, or behavioral analysis, which is another part of the simulation which gets covered. Now we come to the aspect where you have understood a problem, created the problem statement, identified the need, done your conceptual designs, done your detailed designs, done your simulations. Now you want to make a functional prototype and that's where you start creating your functional prototype. That is where your additive manufacturing comes into picture to give you a 3D, uh, give you a digital twin of all the design which you have made in a physical format, a physical operational format. So that's where the whole design and engineering aspect comes into picture. There is a lot of design which also goes into manufacturing. Now the information flows from design to manufacturing. Now in manufacturing, there's a lot of tools which are coming in. Now, if you know, if you have, if you happen to see during a course of engineering, go to any plant and you have to see robots, and if you have to see how components are held onto jigs by jigs and fixtures, these are all smart jigs and fixtures today. Earlier it was all a manual process, but today it's all controlled by sensors and automation. So tooling design becomes a, you know, a very, very critical aspect because even in the manufacturing side of it, a lot of design goes into the manufacturing uh, processes. So whether it is tooling design, whether it is machining, whether it's a whole process planning or whether it is the augmented reality based work instructions, all of that is again designed on the manufacturing side. Now, if you look at uh, you know, the different stations which are there in manufacturing, whether it's an assembly station or a machining station where CNC machines are used or a welding station where a welding robot is being used, all these machineries today are smart connected devices, which basically means when these machineries were being designed, where they were being designed with a particular idea in mind to solve a particular problem for the industry, and that's where the sensors got introduced into all of them to make them smart devices. Automation, we are all moving from 3.0 to 4.0. Automation will is a subject which is recommended for all streams of engineering. To give you a simple example today, uh, home automation is picking up in a large way in the country today. A lot of houses have automation into them where you're controlling your lights, your geysers, your fans, your air conditioners, including your microwaves, everything from your phone. Again, all these devices are smart connected devices or there are plug points being given to them, which are smart plug points, which understand what control has to be done for them. So automation is a must for every engineering student in today's world. So like in the first year of engineering design is taught to every student, uh, engineering design in the same way, automation is a must for everyone to learn. And then comes the operational intelligence aspects with respect to productivity and control, which is again being governed by a lot of technology coming in over there. This is basically to ensure that there is zero defect. This is to ensure that the products getting manufactured, which have been designed, can actually be manufactured in the, in the plant without any defects. Then comes the whole design aspects of service, which is plant maintenance, service design, remote monitoring, which is basically from a maintenance perspective. And all this is encompassed under the ITOT platform, which is uh, uh, operational technology because you have so many machinery and their operational information needs to be pulled onto the IoT platform. So that's where information technology and operational technology talk to the IoT platform. There are multiple analytics which can be carried out and typically the analytics which is carried out is edge analytics. Now, you know, we spoke about you conceptualizing an idea, you're looking at how that idea can actually be uh, brought to life on a digital platform, looking at what kind of intelligence can be built into it. Now, all this is coming in from your design thinking and critical thinking aspects, and that is 
When you start putting both the hats together, a lot of innovation takes place. Now, this is a KTM bike. Uh, most of us have seen these bikes on the cities wherever we come from. This is just to give you an idea. And again, the tool and technology which is being used over here is just for reference. Uh, it's just for you to understand how tools and technologies can be used. Now, there, now for a KTM bike, how augmented reality is used to give a complete product overview. Now, this is very important because when you are designing the bike and when you want to, when the designer wants to interface along with the manufacturing planning and manufacturing execution and maintenance team, such experiences basically help them. So or the audio is coming through, no, sir? Yes, sir. We are able to hear the audio. Sir. Okay, great, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Augmented reality is one of the fastest growing segments in the technology market. AR provides key capabilities that enable industrial organizations to transform their businesses. With PTC's Vuforia Studio, companies can be assured they are working with the world's leading AR brand, as well as the leader in IoT and CAD solutions for industrial enterprises. Organizations can improve service efficiency with step-by-step -step instructions, customer service, using easier self-help guides, sales with virtual product demos and showrooms, and factory efficiency with augmented process plans and inspection processes. With AR, there's no need to lose time looking through repair manuals. AR provides real-time, up-to-date 3D digital information in context of the physical equipment. So now, with the video which is played till now, you basically understand that they came up with the KTM bike, which is a new bike design. The problem statement for them is different areas. One is when a user wants to, you know, how do we understand the specifications of a bike? We basically go to the showroom, look at the physical bike, and then you have a salesperson who is basically telling you the features. With augmented reality, I can just scan the image of a KTM bike, and because of the information which has already been fed into the cloud, it will tell me the features of each and every component I put a tab onto. So what happens is I don't have to go all the way to the showroom. Now, the whole idea over here is to create a design process or an experience process, which is very helpful to the end customer who wants to buy the bike. And the same way, it is also used from a sales and marketing perspective, where they talk about the different features and functionalities of the bike coming into picture, and also from a manufacturing and a maintenance perspective from the service industry. Organizations can overlay 3D service or work instructions on how to perform processes such as machine setup and changeovers, maintenance and repairs, disassembly and reassembly of parts. Euphoria Studio allows technicians to visualize internal components and real-time IoT data that were previously inaccessible in the real world, giving a complete understanding of a product during a repair so they can quickly and accurately resolve problems the first time. Vuforia Studio reduces error rates among field engineers and technicians and increases safety, effectiveness, and productivity by maximizing uptime and reducing repeat service calls. It gives companies the ability to train service technicians how to perform tasks by following easily consumable, interactive, guided work instructions and repair procedures, both in and out of context of the physical asset. Using AR, Organizations can provide a deeper level of understanding to frontline workers in a more effective manner, leading to reduced ramp up time and increased productivity and accuracy, all while reducing training costs. Euphoria Studio empowers industrial customers to lower costs, improve quality and efficiency, and increase the performance of their most important asset, their first line workers. So what you saw over here was basically, you know, from a KTM bike perspective, they covered various different aspects, you know, and all this is happening only in the design phase. Now, once you have done the design, you also have to understand the technology around that is the critical thinking aspect, the innovation aspects, you know, they have brought in a lot of that to address various different stakeholders, right from the end user to the multiple stakeholders at a service station to the manufacturing people to the design engineers understanding the complete aspects of how this whole design is going to get manufactured and be used by the end user. 
So that's where augmented reality as a technology. So we were talking about tools and techniques. So this is the tool and techniques which is basically being used for a product overview. Now we'll take an example of augmented reality being used for sales and marketing. This is for a car from Infinity. That is the QX50. And you would see over here how augmented reality when, when the image is overlaid with the actual car, you can actually start seeing the different parts of the car. You can actually look at those. Now, why is these being done? So this is a requirement which is coming from the user. That's how your whole design aspect is gone. That's why your critical thinking aspect is gone and a little bit of innovation is coming in. Where can I move my whole sales and marketing into an augmented reality experience? So that you know the consumer who's looking at my website can actually get a complete understanding of this and you know then come back to the showroom and have much more interest in what we want to offer. Small video uh, on the car. Now you'll see the tab, they'll bring in a tab and they will basically match the image. The on the sales and marketing side. So we saw from an automotive perspective, now when you look at the aircraft industry, there are the processes which are followed, you know, and if I have to start wearing my complete design process for aircraft safety. Now aircraft safety is not only with respect to the maintenance and the build quality of an aircraft, but it is also with respect to the pre-flight test, which has been carried out. Now a pre-flight test used to be a set of instructions on a paper Till somebody went through the whole design thinking process with the aspect of innovation and critical thinking and said, if I move it into an augmented reality platform for different aircrafts which are there, I can train the pilots on how to carry out multiple pre-flight tests. Now, this again is something which is very, very important because uh, safety of an aircraft starts with the ground test. Or uh, We're here at LiveWorks 2018. And I'm stood in front of the Cirrus SF50 Vision Jet. So what we're demonstrating here today are some owner operator applications. This jet is designed to be flown as a personal jet. And the FAA mandates that before you fly this plane, you have to carry out certain safety checks. They're referred to as pre-flight checks. Now, ordinarily, this would be a fairly large document with many pages of paper that you would have to go through manually as you cycle through these checks. What we've done is we've taken all of that information and all of those steps this and we've created an now. interactive augmented reality experience for the owner. So now the owner can pick up a tablet or their phone and they can be guided through these pre-flight checks using augmented reality. The advantage of this is that the augmented reality experience guides that owner to where they need to be a particular location on the aircraft. Then it directs their attention to the part that they should be you know, checking or examining and then tells them what the serviceable condition of that part should be. So once they complete these checks by following the experience, they will know that this aircraft is ready to fly. So the other thing that we've done, we've created interactive training for the operator. Um, it used to be done on a web-based LMS system. So you would look at uh, videos of the aircraft and an instructor would kind of explain the systems. Now using augmented reality, you can take a tablet and you can hold it over the aircraft and the experience will explain all the different systems that are in that particular part of the aircraft. So for example, if you want to learn about the environmental control system and how that works, the AR experience will show you in 3D 
where those parts are located on the aircraft. And it will also include computer animations that show the cold air coming in and the warm air coming out of that system as it ventilates the aircraft. So the advantage of this is it's contextual. You can, you can look at the aircraft and know where all these major components are located and also how they operate. What's made this possible is that the full digital definition of this aircraft is stored within Windchill. So we, we have the ability to create these highly interactive augmented reality experiences with very, very little effort because we have such a good digital definition of the aircraft to begin with. Now we saw the different applications. Now let's look at some of the industrial machineries. Now, if you look at CNC machines, you know, you, uh, the industry has been using CNC machines for more than two decades now. Uh, you know, I remember 24 years back, 25 years back, I did my engineering project on programming of CNC machines. So they've been in existence for over two decades now. Now, what was happening was these machines were totally governed by the operator. So they were designed in such a way that they would have a CNC controller on it and uh, the human would have to interface with the human machine interface, the HMI screen over there. And he would have to code in and he would have to look at that screen for any diagnostics uh, you know, of the machine going down or any failure mode analysis to be carried out. But what designers have done over the period of time, and that's where a lot of design thinking has gone in, is to understand the problem that the CNC machines can actually also be controlled remotely. So instead of doing a preventive maintenance, we can do something called as a predictive maintenance. Now, what is preventive maintenance? Preventive maintenance is a weekly once uh, maintenance operation which is carried out on the machine, but you would never come to know during that process of time as to when the next failure is gonna happen on the machine. With predictive maintenance, what happens is, it will predict to you when a particular component is going to fail because of the sensor information coming out, the data being collected for data analytics. And when you do an application development, it will tell you that if you're getting into a zone where in the next four to five days, you can expect this particular component to fail. So you're predicting a failure and you can then go and take care of it rather than having uh, costly downtimes. Now, this was the problem statement where design thinkers came into picture and they started designing CNC machines, which were smart and which had sensors on them. They would talk to the IoT platform using gateways uh, or routers where the sensor information will be routed from. And then that information basically is stored on the cloud or is stored on premise. And you create IoT applications on top of that, which is used by the people in the industry. Now this is with respect to the industrial equipment for a CNC machine. This is just to give you an idea as to how this problem was solved, you know, taking into consideration design thinking, criticality, and innovation. The same is applicable to robots also. So robot is an industrial, you know, what is used in the industry is a six degrees of freedom and articulated robot, which is there. Each joint being controlled by a servo motor and um, has multiple sensors on it. At the same time, uh, they have their own controller and they can also talk to an IoT platform. Now, Robots are used for multiple applications in the industry. They can be used from material handling, also known as pick and place, from packaging, cutting, welding, painting. These are multiple ways in which it is used. They have their own distributed control systems. DCS is again a kind of a PLC. You have your robotic controllers. And all this information is basically then fed into an IoT platform through a gateway. And then it is basically, you do a lot of uh, application developments for productivity improvement, original equipment efficiency, analytics, predictive maintenance, all that is carried out in terms of applications built on the IoT platform. And you can have your user interfaces and devices, and you can have multiple various connectivities to ERP systems, SCADA systems, MES systems, all that can be created. Now, this was again, a complete design process, a design thinking process, which was given to a lot of people who have come out with this and all these have today become smart connected devices. EV is an important area. You know, the, the boom of electric vehicle in India is humongous. Uh, you have the bigs, the biggies who are actually manufacturing it, but there are a lot of startup organizations who are working on the area of e-mobility. Now, 
it's very simple, you know, for anyone to say the difference between a diesel car, petrol car, and an electric vehicle is just remove the complete engine and replace it by a motor and a driver and a battery pack instead of a petrol tank. And that's basically the electric vehicle. It's a yes and a no. It's not as simple as a replacement, but you know, there's a whole lot of design with thinking which goes into this. There's a lot of critical thinking which goes into this. And a lot of innovation is today happening in the area of EV. Now, the different areas in an EV which you need to look at is the complete system simulation as to how the whole system is going to work. You will also have to look at the structural strength because there's you know, the motor and the drive and the uh, battery pack are actually much more lighter. So you will have to look at the complete robustness of the car with respect to the structural design, crashworthiness, and uh, you know how you know how well it has been designed for aerodynamics. Now, an electric vehicle, the two important aspects are the motor and the battery. So the motor design becomes very, very critical. And the motor design will also define the speed at which the car can go. And the battery pack is also very important. There are various different techniques in which uh, batteries are being made. Lithium ion, ceramics, hydrogen cells. So there are multiple ways in which batteries are being made. So one thing which a designer uh, has to also keep into mind you know, when he's working on the electric vehicle side of it, is there's a lot of innovation happening in terms of battery and battery cooling systems. A battery tends to heat up. So if you're using your phone continuously for two, three hours, you can actually feel the back of your phone getting heated up. Similarly, when you're driving a car, electric vehicle, for a period of six hours or eight hours, the battery starts getting heated up. The battery needs to be cooled. So you know what kind of a cooling mechanism do you need? So that comes into picture. Electric mobility, is, we call it as EV, and at times we extend it to AV, which is autonomous vehicles. Now, autonomous vehicles, again, the car has fitted with a lot of sensors where the car gets into an auto drive mode. Like you have an autopilot in aircrafts, there is an auto drive mode in cars coming in today. It's already there. Tesla has come out with it. Google is working a lot on it. Amazon is working a lot on that. So these are some of the you know companies who were not into automobiles who are actually working on these technologies for autonomous vehicles. Now there is an antenna design. There is 5G communication, which is happening. So there is a lot of information flow, which is happening. And the complete process is the whole design thinking process as to how it needs to be carried out. And importantly is mathematical simulation, which needs to be done. So we saw some examples. We saw how it's basically being uh, done across the globe in multiple areas. Now, you need not have to start from scratch. You know, Somebody may have already designed a component, manufactured a part, or manufactured, a, in this case, it's an engine block. Now you want to do, uh, you know, more R&D and innovation on top of that. And you know you want the preliminary design to come in. So what you do is you get into the reverse engineering. Aspect. The first thing is, you know, if you want to follow the traditional way of doing it is you understand the, pro you, uh, and understand the problem, write the problem statement, see how it's going to address the users, then get into the design, prototyping and testing aspects. The other is if you want to take an existing design or an existing component, and then you want to reverse engineer it and then do a lot of modifications in terms of your uh, design changes on it. That's where reverse engineering comes into play. So what happens with the scanner, which you're seeing over here is the scanner takes the image uh, of the component, which is kept in front, gives you cloud point data, which is converted into 3D models. And from those 3D models, you can actually get into a lot of design concepts coming into picture. Now, looking at the fourth stage, which was the you know, prototyping stage, additive manufacturing is extensively being used in the industry today for prototyping, not only prototyping, but also for manufactured components, which can be fitted directly onto the uh, equipment or product. So, you know, it is not only for prototyping, but you can have a manufacturing quality part coming out of this. So it is very fast and effective to create uh, prototypes. There is n number of choices with material, which is available right from polymers to metals, which is there, including titanium, including uh, carbon uh, related, uh, carbon oriented uh, steel, which is there, and uh, even fiber objects can be created over here. So how does 3D printing help in the whole uh, critical thinking, design thinking process? It helps to convert your imagination, creativity, and designs and bring it to life. So that's the way it basically works. How does it help the students? It basically gives them practical skills to convert ideation into products and to address the real world challenges. So if you look at it from an innovation process, you have the whole additive manufacturing which is being used in, in the industry today. The whole idea is to have a control on cost, 
have a better value which is being offered and to drive revenues and profits for an organization. So this is how this technology is being used to a large extent in the industry today to drive innovation on the whole design to manufacturing process. You can, on the right hand side of the screen, you can actually see, uh, you know, a gearbox design which was done for Ashok Leland and plus a lot of designs which kids have converted into ideas. This is just from a perspective that, you know, this starts as early as fifth grade, you know, in high school. So students in fifth grade onwards start working with design platforms as well as with 3D printing. So the whole manufacturing process for 3D printing is you get your design, what you have conceptualized to address a particular problem. You start doing the slicing for it. You do the additive manufacturing where you're adding metals or adding uh, products and making it. And then you do the whole post-processing post -processing, and you have the final components as you see on your right hand side. It is also revolutionizing the complete classroom. Now, you need not have to only do you know, mechanical, electrical, electronic components. You know, you can also design your own uh, wind systems. You can see over here, there's a wind system example, which is done. You can have a physical small prototype for it. Students who are interested in, you know, uh, architecture can actually, you know, you can see an Eiffel Tower has been done. Or if you're trying to come up with your own architectural design, you can actually print it. If you want to go down to fossils and if you want to understand how a fossil looks like, you can actually do that printing. You can do food technology printing. You can do graphic designs can be printed. Geographical locations can be printed. Electric cars, racing cars, chemistry, complex molecule designs can be printed. And it is being used extensively in the medical industry, not just for teaching medical students, but also uh, the components get into a lot of medical equipment, which is being used by medical technicians. Drones, a favorite area for today's kids. I would say, you know, everyone thinks of drone as a fun device which you can control uh, by a remote. You can take it from one location to the other. You have a camera attached on it. You can visualize things up front on the uh, screen, which you, the handheld screen, which you would have with the controls. So that's what everyone thinks about a drone. But drone, the whole design of a drone. Now, you know, coming into the aspects of wearing your, uh, you know, design thinking hat, now, what is the different problems a drone can actually solve? There are multiple problems a drone can actually solve. But before that, you also need to understand what is the technology which goes into the drone. Now, drones basically cover IoT, big data, image processing, and much more apart from that. Now, if you look at it, what are the technologies emerging in the drone side is big data, cloud computing, POC computing, IoT, augmented reality, AI, and ML. Now, that's how the whole uh, you know, technology aspects is coming into the drone. Now, when uh, you are addressing a particular problem and going to design a drone for that usage, you, know, uh, you will have to understand that the drone is an unmanned aerial vehicle, what we also call as a UAV. Now, that is controlled by a remote control where there are signals which is transmitted from the remote control to the UAV. Now, information coming in from the drone is then fed through the remote controller onto a smart device, could be a tablet or a smartphone. And from that onto a cloud, which goes into a big data cluster where a lot of big data analytics is actually being carried out. So that's how it works. If you look at the image right at the bottom, it's basically talking about fog ground stations, which help in transmitting data uh, you know, over a large scale uh, where a drone is going to be used. Now, where are, you know, this is just an example of you know, uh, technologies where you may happen to work in the future. So drones uh, caters to multiple industry requirements. So that is where your problem statement comes in. It is used for monitoring of power lines. It is used for inspection of solar plants. It is used for road inspection. So in, you know, if I, uh, now let's take, for example, if I'm in Koramangla, which is one of the most, uh, you know, I would say uh, important towns inside Bangalore, but you know, has one of the worst road conditions. And if I want to do a road inspection, and if I want to find out where are the different places where the road is having an issue, before I get onto my work, instead of doing a physical survey, I can actually send a drone to do that survey. I gave you a city example, but drones are being used extensively on highways to look at the road conditions because you know the vehicles on a highway uh, fly at a very high speed, and any damage to the road could also mean damage to the vehicle and accidents could take place. So that's where for the road inspection it's used. It's used in the smart city inspection, uh, smart city uh, uh, projects. 
it is used in pipeline inspections disaster management disaster management where a human being cannot reach a drone can reach over there and you can do remote surveillance of the disaster area railway services use this especially you know when they want to monitor the tracks and ensure that the, the tracks are not cracked or you know the track has not been removed by somebody this is to ensure that there is no uh, you know eventuality taking place in terms of an accident agriculture is finding a large large usage to drones uh, even iot is playing a large uh, role in uh, agriculture to the extent that the whole iot uh, for agriculture today also talks about you know linking up the whole design has been done in such a way that you can link up and get information from satellites weather satellites so that's the, that's the advancement in the whole iot design process which has taken place it can be used for mine surveys bridge, bridge inspections and for industrial inspection so these are the list of different areas where drones can be used now when you are uh, getting into an area of drones now you know this example which i'm showing you is from an organization called ig drones ig drones started around four and a half five years back from students who passed out of an engineering college in bhubaneswar in odisha now they have not only designed and developed it uh, they have also you know created what you can see over here is a ui a simulator ui which is used for controlling the drones this is also been designed by them so you know the whole ui aspect also gets covered on the hmi on the human machine interface now this is just to give you different ideas of different products which are there where you know a lot of design thinking critical thinking innovation is all gone in over here there are patents being filed over here this is being used extensively in india by the likes of isro hal drdos so those people are collaborating with multiple different drone manufacturers ig drones is an indigenous product designed and manufactured in india and you know that's the reason of bringing this up is for you also for you to understand the different areas and the different technologies which is getting which is into the process of design today to address problems uh, i do not know how many of you have actually seen robots till date but you know industrial robots look very different but today what's happening is we're all uh, moving on to the area where we want to talk about humanoids now when we talk about humanoids uh, humanoids today are being used for mundane activities like it's being used in restaurants uh, you know to serve food to a particular table uh, it is being used uh, you know as a guide in uh, you know museums where you can you can take a humanoid who will walk along with you and based on where you stop it will explain that aspect to you so that's how humanoids are being used uh, you know the whole idea of showing this to you is you know easy robot is from an organization called jd and they are basically uh, designing robots uh, designing user uh, user interfaces uh, building the prototypes and you know allowing children to actually work with it uh, you can the whole idea of showing this to you is you know this is one step where you can actually get into when you what, what we call as uh, open technology robots this is a complete open technology robot does not have a specific controller to it you can uh, you know uh, there are uh, what we call as predefined uh, programs uh, or syntaxes which you can drag and drop to make into a program or you can use python java scripting c++ c hash or a c derivative three derivative language called easy script to actually program the robot so this talks about the complete open technology of the robot which can work on various different aspects now when you start designing a product for the industry moving forward you know as you're going to complete your engineering what we also recommend to you is to also look at the open architecture perspective an open architecture doesn't bind you to a particular controller type it also gives you the options of working with multiple different uh, operating devices so that is uh, the idea where your innovation aspects need to come into picture that is where your critical thinking comes into picture and that is where your design thinking comes into picture is how can i make it robust and scalable so those aspects need to be brought in i'll play a small video it's a fun video for you to understand how humanoids work Hi, I'm Dennis Combites, and welcome to the world of robotics. Over the coming weeks, you'll be taking an incredible journey and in learning about innovative technologies that are transforming the way that we live. Robotics is much more than assembly lines and manufacturing. It's cars that can drive themselves, customer service robots in stores, even robotic prosthetic limbs that can be controlled with just your mind. You'll be learning about all of these technologies and more in your exploration. And if you're a little bit concerned about the technology involved and you don't really know that much about robotics, don't worry about it. 
you'll be using Easy Robots, the world's most powerful, versatile, and easy to use robot platform. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to our robots. This is Rolly, a rover style robot. This is Six, a hexapod. And this is JD, a humanoid robot. And you'll be amazed at what you can make these robots do. They can be controlled with a computer, an Xbox 360 remote, a Wii remote, an iPhone, an Android phone, tablets, virtual reality glasses that allow you to see what your robot sees. And when you turn your head, your robot turns his head. Or you can control these robots with just your voice. JD, show me how strong you are. I love it when he does that. JD, what else can you do? JD, take a seat. JD, stand back up. Each of these movements that you've just seen can be programmed in about 30 minutes once you understand how the software works. And robotics is growing so quickly, it's much more than just movements. It's about artificial intelligence and the human-robot interaction. You can program your robots to have a conversation. JD, how are you today? Each of our robots comes with a built-in camera to help the robot see. And these cameras can be used to track things like motion, QR codes, colors, glyphs, faces. They can even learn objects such as a Wii remote or your face. So your robot can greet you by name and know who you are. It can even recognize if you're happy or sad. So let's play with them for a minute. Thank you, JD, nicely done. And I can quickly change him from tracking a ball to tracking my face. Hi, JD, how are you doing? You can also control these robots kinesthetically with things like a Wii remote. And what that means is that you can control the robot's movements with your own body movements. There's literally millions of things you can do with these robots, and I'm sure you're excited to get into them and start playing with them. So I won't keep you any longer, but have fun and enjoy your exploration into the world of robotics. Hi, I'm Dennis Combite. So, you know, uh, that, that brings me to the end of my presentation, you know, but uh, coming back to whatever we discussed, we basically discussed that, you know, whenever you're doing design thinking, critical thinking and innovation, please use a lot of technology because you know, whatever need you are going to be addressing for the industry is going to be based on IoT, automation, AI, ML. It is going to use a lot of sensor technology. It's going to use a lot of vision-based technology. So the whole idea of taking you through these examples is to give you ideas of how, you know, devices or machinery or products are getting designed today. Uh, the three aspects on which we're talking today is definitely being done, but a lot of technology which is already existing is being brought into it. Mechatronics is the way forward and mechatronic is the way it's going to be till industry 4.0 lasts. So because uh, it's going to be a collaborative effort between mechanical, electrical, electronics, and with the IoT platform coming in for application development, you would have computer science students also. So that's the whole idea. Uh, I didn't want to get into any of the design processes because you know every uh, design process is different and it all depends upon the end user's requirements or the need it needs to be addressed. If there are any questions, uh, you could reach out to me or if you want to send so it. Students not having any questions, you can unmute yourself and uh, post the query. So our resource person will be very much delighted to answer your query. You can also post it in the chat box. Any questions, students? So the chat has been disabled. I think that was Google chat.
So I think now students can unmute themselves to post queries if you have. Hello, Rahul sir, can you hear me? Yeah, please. Sir, uh, really it was very, very informative over the few months. So I have a question, sir. Yes, ma'am. Sir, like uh, students uh, for engineering students, starting from the first semester, who now as per you know that they have to involve in their, they have to do a level where they have to have a prototype. Mm -hmm. So how actually our students can start their journey so that they can help or they can involve in the final stage of prototyping? Madam, there are multiple ways in which you can do it. So there are, you know, when with the government of Karnataka, like, you know, we established uh, with GTTC, we established around 11 center of excellences in, in Karnataka itself. Uh, the nearest one is in Bangalore, uh, which is in the Rajaji Nagar side. So if they have done the designs and if they want to do prototyping, prototype as a service is available at such institutes where they, it already exists. We can also have the institute tie up with organizations like SLM or with Stratasys, wherein students can do projects and go to these organizations who allow them to 3D print the design concepts which they have done so that they can actually see a physical prototype of the same and then make it functional also. So those kind of industry tie ups and tie ups with government bodies like GTTC is very much possible. Sir, uh, like uh, any domain uh, students can go there and get their uh, project uh, ideas to be can be done there? Absolutely, madam. Irrespective of whether he's coming from mechanical, electrical, computer science, civil, so, you know, they can, whatever they're designing, you know, let's say a chipset is being designed. Now you want the whole body of a chipset to be 3D printed. That can actually be done. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Sure. In case there is no yes, question and if the students to write back to you, you can, you can send me those questions and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Yes, students, if you have any queries, kindly ask And they have also given the feedback link in the chat box. So kindly give your valuable chat box, valuable feedback using the link provided to you. And uh, request students to kindly ask any questions because innovation design and thinking is something a new subject that has been uh, introduced by VTU as per the new education policy 2020. Therefore, if you have any queries, it would be clarified by our experts. The students or teachers. So no questions are there. I request the Professor Padma Gayatri, Madam, to kindly give a vote of thanks. Good morning. Am I audible? I am CJ Padma Gayatri, Assistant Professor, Department of Electronics and Education. It is a great honor to propose the vote of thanks. I thank the management and the principal for increasing our team in Students Innovation Council in conducting events which benefit the faculty and student community as a whole. I take this opportunity to thank Mr. Rahul Kahan, Head of Technology for System Integration, for giving us an insight about design thinking, physical thinking, and innovation design. Sir, you just gave us a brief idea from ideation to product development. Also, you educated our students regarding the industry trends, emerging technologies, actions required, product development, product overview, AR, industrial IoT, e-mobility, drone applications, and robotics. On behalf of our team, IIT, I thank all the participants 
and then the faculty members. And we look forward to have more such sessions in the future. Thank you a lot for your time. Thank you. I request all the students and staff members to give the give your valuable feedback through the link that has been provided in the chat box. So thank we thank the speaker, management, everyone. So we will end this session now. Thank you all for your valuable participation and time. Recording stopped. Yes, students, finally, fill the feedback form so you will get the e certificate immediately after that. Stop. Okay, I will request you to kindly fill the feedback form. Thank you all.